Um, so those who don't know me, I'm Amy Tarbox. I'm one of the career counselors here um, at the Career Lab and here at my house in, in Rhode Island. Um, we're kind of doing these programs for whoever is available and wants to join them, and then we're going to record them and kind of push them out later so people can access the information as needed. So I am recording now. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started with the resume workshop portion. And then I'm happy to hang around for Q&A on anything career, internship, anything related at all. Um, right now, just questions you have, um, just one event, whatever. I'm happy to, to do that, do that. All right. And I'm going to hit my present here. All right. So resumes today, very exciting stuff. Um, so, I think everyone already has a resume. <laughs> I know Carrie definitely does. I know there's only two other people on and I see one familiar face. Um, so I don't know how much new news we're gonna have in here, but stop me with any questions or specific things to you. Um, because it's such a small group, I'm happy to just kind of make it more what you need um, versus what I would normally present. So just uh, shout if you need anything. All right. Um, so we've kind of gone through the what is a resume before, but it's it's basically a, a brief account of a person's education, qualifications, experience, um, and it's it's you know basically an application for a job or an internship. Um, sometimes it's part of a package to be sent for that, and sometimes it is the um, whole application. Um, what you want to be doing with it is conveying how well you fit the job description and what you can bring to the organization. Um, so it says. It's important because it's a snapshot of you, what you've done, um, and I kind of already went over it being part of it or the whole thing, um, and what should it achieve. So this is the important part. So you want to be showcasing your most impressive, relevant experiences um, to the opportunity that you're applying to. Um, you want to make sure that you're displaying that you are familiar with um, the industry or you have experience in it or similar um, skills. And you're going to want to be highlighting your soft skills through descriptions of your experiences. So that's the communication staff, um, teamwork, all those kind of things. Those are your soft skills. And you want to list your relevant hard skills. Um, the keys to this is making sure it's all can be looked at in a brief glance. So you want to really make sure that um, you're focused on assuming that employers have really short attention spans. They've kind of done some studies on average, you have about 15 seconds to catch their eye before they move on. Um, and so you want them to keep reading so that they want to interview you. Um, and you want to make sure that it's pleasing to the eye. So you want to make sure the sections are really well done, um, that the relevant things to them are, are really kind of towards the, the top half of that resume. Um, and you want to make sure that it clearly indicates that you have the right experience for the job. All right. So our guiding principles are gonna be, we're gonna create a glanceable, digestible, easy to read document. Okay, so keys to formatting, one page only. Um, margins can be between 0.5 and one inches. You wanna use common fonts um, that can transfer well between PC and Mac. Um, some good choices are, are listed here. Um, you wanna make sure it's really consistent in the formattings and you wanna make sure that you're putting the most recent things on top. So what can you or should you put on there? Um, you want to make sure that you're really highlighting whatever best depicts your skills and experiences um, that are relevant to this opportunity. You want to really be looking at that job description um, and making sure you're highlighting anything you have that's relevant there. Um, so this can include job experiences, internships, research, um, leadership stuff, both you know, at Brown and before, class projects, athletics, volunteer clubs, organizations, <laughs> honors awards, scholarships, um, and those are usually kind of in that education bucket. Um, so the header. Um, so this is where we're gonna, you know, this is your contact information. So you wanna have your full name on there. Um, if you have a preferred name, that's fine. Like my legal name is Amy Tarbox Johnson. I only use Amy Tarbox on my, um, on all my work-related materials. Um, you can also put things in parentheses if like you have a name that you prefer and then you want to include your legal name as well. Um, so that's another option there. You want to include your email address. We do recommend using your brown.edu email. It's just another way to showcase that you're at Brown. Um, and your phone number where you can best be reached for an interview. Um, optional is a mailing address. Um, this is a little tricky right now because you're 
home or just not at Brown. Um, so using your Brown address isn't really <laughs> um, what we ignore, you know, what we would do at this point. Um, but traditionally, if you were, you know, at Brown during the semester, um, we'd recommend using your Brown address to again showcase Brown and your home address if you're looking for an opportunity close to home. Um, you can include links to your um, social media or your LinkedIn if you want an employee to, employer to see it. Um, and, you know, that's kind of another, another way to kind of share more experiences that you have um, than it just fit on your resume. So that LinkedIn can be kind of everything you've ever done, whereas the resume can be pretty tailored to the types of things you're applying to. Um, and for formatting, your name should be the biggest thing on that page. You want it around a 20 point font, usually centered. Um, contact information can be multiple lines or one line, depending on how much space you want to use up. Um, and this is the same header you're going to use on your cover letter. So here is an example. So we have Wonder Woman. Um, she's at Brown. Um, she's got a, um, you know, put all of her, she kind of wanted to use up a little more space. So she put her um, mailing address on one line and her phone and email on the next. So the education section, we're going to be showcasing your concentration, GPA, relevant coursework, honors. Um, so, you know, the brown entry. So on the left hand side, you're going to want to include your concentration. If you haven't declared that yet, you can just pick what you expect to concentrate in. Um, it's not binding. No one's going to come back to you in two years and say, I can't believe on that resume I saw two years ago that you are a computer science concentrator and now you're religious studies. Um, GPA. You, you know, Brown doesn't provide it for you, as you're well aware, um, but you can calculate it if you like. S and C's um, don't count even with distinctions, so you can just leave those out of your calculation. Um, and if you're not sure if it's going to help or, or harm your case, then you can leave it off. The only exception to this is when an organization asks for it specifically in their application materials. Um, so, you know, a lot of times investment banks or um, consulting firms and sometimes CS companies will, will want it and it'll be very clear in their application. So that's a case you will want to include it whether you're comfortable or not, um, because not including it might just raise questions for them and they might think it, it's worse than it actually is. Um, you're going to want to include some relevant coursework. You know, we usually recommend four to five classes. Um, you know, those should be, you know, as you move through your time at Brown, um, you know, the intro classes will definitely drop away and it should be kind of more high level classes in your in your concentration or ones that are most relevant to the types of opportunities you're applying to. Um, only include your standardized test scores if a company asks. Um, and you can include any honors or scholarships here. On the right hand side, you're going to have, you know, Providence, Rhode Island, expect a graduation um, in your May, December with your dates there. So. High school. Um, this can be taken out usually around junior year. It depends on how much space you have. Um, you know, sometimes I've seen it come out sooner. People have a lot on their resume. Sometimes they leave it on a little bit longer. It's totally fine. Um, you might want to include it um, for a while if you went to like a, a well-known um, high school or if it's you're trying to get home and, and show that you know you have roots in this area. So it's fine to leave it on for then. Um, so it's kind of set up the same way. On the left hand side, you're going to have your high school name, your GPA, um, what type of GPA it was, weighted, unweighted, um, any honor scholarships, et cetera, that you had there. Um, and then you can include, you know, notable awards and activities that don't warrant kind of a, a larger description in the body of the resume below. Now on the right hand side, you're going to say where your high school was located and, you know, when you graduated. So here is how that looks. Um, you know, Brown Bear decided to use only one line for their header of all their contact information. That's totally fine. Um, and this is kind of how they handled their high school and Brown information so far. Um, so they were still pretty early in their um, kind of early in their tenure, Brown. So they have some intro classes still on here. Um, and then looking at high school, you know, the things they chose to list, valedictorian, um, and then kind of their, some of their AP, their honor societies and things like that. And then some things that were really important to them, but not worth using up like more space on their resume. Okay. Um, so now we're going to pop over to the skills and interest section. Um, so we started at the top, we had our header, we had our, um, our 
the academics, and then the skills and interests are usually go on the bottom. Um, so these are going to be showing off your technical language skills, um, and the interest part is going to be to break the ice with interviewers. So hard skills. Um, so technical computers, so, you know, office is assumed, but feel free to list it, especially if it's like really clear in the job description that they want someone who has um, specific, you know, PowerPoint and Excel skills included there. Um, other programs to list, you know, Adobe, you know, any of like MATLAB, those kind of um, data analysis ones. If you are a scientist, lab skills are great to include. Um, if you're computer science, programming languages, um, definitely make sure that if you're, is anyone a computer scientist? No, okay. You know, of all three of you, and I know, I know the answer for two out of three. <laughs> um, so that doesn't matter, but if in the event that someone's watching this later who is a CS concentrator, you want to make sure that when you're talking about your programming languages, the ones that you'd be comfortable whiteboarding in an interview are the ones that come first. Um, and then you can also say exposure to or familiar with for the other ones a little bit later. Um, design skills. So those are really helpful for a lot of different industries. So definitely include those. Um, and so this will mostly go at the bottom of your resume. When it when should it go directly underneath education? So that's when it's the first thing you want an employer to see. So maybe you're an early stage CS student um, or another type of STEM student that you know your lab skills are really um, kind of be critical to what the work you'd be doing in this internship, then it can go in, in sort of second place. Um, another time you would move it up is if you speak a lot of languages. So say four fluently, that's something you really don't want people to miss. So I would pull that up to the top. This is not a section where we would include soft skills. Um, so we're gonna wanna talk about communication, teamwork, et cetera. Those are gonna come through in the way that you're describing your experiences. So that's more of a show me than tell me. Um, for languages, we here's kind of a, a guideline on how to talk about your, your fluency levels. Um, so you want to include any foreign language that you speak. Um, it's assumed that English is a language that you speak. Um, and then here's kind of the way we, we suggest referring to your levels of proficiency. Um, you want to make sure that you are not exaggerating your proficiency. You don't want to get an interview situation and someone starts speaking to you in a language that you haven't spoken since high school or earlier and you kind of forgot. Um, that's just not going to be a fun, a fun way to kick off an interview with anybody. So don't do that to yourself. Okay, moving on. Um, so interest. So this um, these are usually things that aren't academic or professional. Um, three to five is a good rule of thumb here. Um, so these are kind of can be more fun things. Um, basically, they're going to be like conversation starters. So that's the whole reason you're including it. You might share a common interest with an interviewer and it's a great way for the two of you to kind of connect. Um, and then that really kicks off the interview well and you're going to feel comfortable and, and ready to, to kind of dive in there. Um, usually there is just, you know, people open up like, oh, I see you like yodeling, you know, I also yodel. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite yodel? I don't even know if that's how you refer to it. Um, but it's just a nice way, like usually if you're walking into an interview or sort of in the beginning, um, it just kind of sets the stage in a nice, comfortable, friendly way. So they're good to include in that sense. Okay, so here is kind of how it gets set up. So this person, you know, has multiple languages, so they um, they kind of led with that first and then they went with their technical stuff and then their interests. Um, and then the other person, um, you know, they had some, some of the skills were slightly different, so like a licensed EMT, um, you know, also lifeguarding I've seen go in there. Um, they have their languages listed and then they got really specific with their interests. Um, you know, I like the cultivating African violets and competitive 10 meter air rifle shooter. Sure, that's good to know. Um, so you can get, I, you know, the more specific you get, I think the more interesting it is. So if you can do that, go for it. So that's that section. So then moving on to the most um, important and slightly daunting section of your resume is organizing your experiences into sections. Um, this can be based on role type, skills, industry. Um, you can really play with it to make sure that you're um, highlighting the things that are most relevant to that employer as early in the resume as you can. So we will head into this. Um, so the, the header is here. You know, this one, sometimes you don't really know other, <laughs> um, you, know, you wouldn't necessarily want to say like orchestra drumline experience. So this person was a leader in both of those. So we just popped into a leadership section. Um, and then the entry is, is kind of 
shown here how we're setting it up. So it's more setting up like a job or an experience. So section headers. So these are labels that indicate um, what it is. So a type of industry or skills. Um, there are some good examples here for skill types or industries. Try to avoid using like paid work experience, volunteer experience, et cetera. Um, it's more, you know, what you did versus if you got paid for it or not. Um, if you're a varsity athlete, we do recommend having a varsity athletic section. A lot of employers really like to see that. Um, if you have it, you don't want to hide it. It shows you're coachable, hardworking. Um, not that other people aren't, but that's just a nice, easy way to, to kind of identify that. So we do recommend including it in there. Um, and we have a, a whole bank of section titles um, in our tip sheet that I'll link to a little later on in the presentation. Um, but there's some really, really great ones there, especially if you're stuck. Um, you want to think about not what you've already done, but kind of what you're aiming towards. Um, so, you know, you can have a section that is, say, consulting experience, um, and you did some, some consulting for a class. And so it's like a class project, but that's the most relevant thing you have in that arena. Um, you know, feel free to have a section that says consulting experience, and I'd probably put it towards the top. Um, it's okay um, to make it a bit of a stretch. So that example I just gave you is, is one, but you can kind of play with it a little bit. And like I said, uh, time and time again already in this uh, conversation, the most relevant sections should go first. Um, so if you're looking at two different types of opportunities, it's okay to have two resumes and you just kind of move those sections and flip them based on what one is more applicable to what you're applying to. So formatting each entry, um, so in each section, you're going to want to put the most recent stuff on top. On the left hand side, we recommend putting the organization and title. On the right hand side, location, so city, state, and time period. Um, I tend to recommend doing semesters and summer, um, unless that you've been somewhere for several years. It just, it just looks cleaner than, you know, May to August. Um, but that's up to you. It also lets you, if you have a shorter term um, summer opportunity, it also lets you kind of own that for a summer instead of like for a month. So that might make it, um, you know, feel a little bit more um, impactful. So, and if you have multiple roles at one organization, you know, you can consolidate that entry. Um, so you would want the most recent thing you've done there on top within that section, but you can kind of show your progression. Um, so you're going to you know, on a new line, hit tab, left adjust your title, and then put the time period under that, and then you'll have your bullet points. So I'll show you that right now. Um, so the student had two internships, um, engineering internships at the same firm. So you can see how they kind of set it up. They did their structural one first, and then their mechanical one next. Um, I think this is a nice clean way to, to save a little bit of space and also just show that you are kind of promoted or asked back at the same organization. So it's a nice way to handle it there. So the bullet points. Um, so this is the most important thing that we're going to talk about. So we want to be telling, you know, telling a concise story about what you did and the impact it had. Um, so you want to think about the context of the project or opportunity and how it relates to the goals of, of maybe the organization or even just your own personal project. Think about the impact you had. So what did you do to get from A to B? And then how did your work or, or input help kind of move the goals of the organization or project forward? Um, you're always going to want to start each bullet point with an action verb. Um, we have a great bank of them if you get stuck. Um, again, I'll link to that later on in the presentation. And you're going to really want to pay attention to tense. Um, so think about, you know, anything that you're currently doing is in present, anything else is in past. Um, you can mix it within the same opportunity. So say you're still a leader of a student organization on campus. Um, you can say that you're, you know, what you're currently working on, and then maybe you ran a giant event, and you can talk about that event in past tense. So it's okay to mix within, um, within that category. And so, you know, some good examples of these action words, you know, publicized, established, um, evaluated, integrated, you know, managed is always a good one. Um, and those are just kind of good ways to think about talking about your experiences. So a good example is you edited product images for a company's 7,000 plus product catalog for e-commerce platform launch by utilizing Adobe Photoshop. So what I like about this is you said what you did first and then kind of how you did it. Um, so you want to be, and also the amount of like um, numbers that are in this. So the 7,000 plus product catalog, I think that's important to include. Anytime you can include those numbers is really important. Um, 
And so you want to make sure that you're quantifying as much as possible and you are being economical. I'm sorry, <laughs> economical. Whew, not enough coffee today. Um, so the things that were really meaningful experiences and relevant, those are ones that you're going to want to talk about a little bit more than some of the other ones that maybe, um, you know, were important projects, but just weren't as, in, you know, in depth or not as not as recent and relevant. Um, so something you can do is brainstorm all your past experiences and then kind of group them into relevant section headers. So here is a example of somebody who has a lot of refugee advocacy experience. Um, I like the way that they bundle this. I like their category. I think it's super specific. Um, and then also the ways that they let off their bullets, I think, are, are nice. Um, just kind of, I think they did it really well. So that's why I shared this example here. There's a lot of numbers mixed in. Um, so I don't know, I think this one is good. So, and I'll share these slides after um, on the, our website. So you can kind of refer back to them there. Um, so some takeaways, don't stress, you got this. Um, Here's some ways to fill a page if you don't have um, enough. So you can kind of mess with your formatting a little bit. So a 12 point font, one inch margins, your section headers can be larger than that 12 points. Um, you can use multiple lines for your contact information and increase spacing between lines. Um, they really think about the experience you have. You probably have more than you realize. So class projects can go on there. Um, you know, sports, it doesn't necessarily have to be varsity, um, but you know, if you spend a lot of time on athletics, feel free to include it. Um, like I said, it shows dedication, discipline. Um, jobs don't have to be internships. You know, all jobs require and develop skills. So, you know, I used to waitress and scoop ice cream back in the day. I learned how to manage chaos really well without showing it. Um, and also, you know, to deal with difficult customers, which has been useful in every job I've had. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot of great skills that come from any kind of job that you've had in the past. So don't feel like you need to hide things that aren't official internships. Um, you know, your clubs and organizations are important to include. You do volunteer work both now or before Brown. Um, those are all great things to include on there. And you want to really be, you know, if you still need to fill some space, think about kind of the most relevant or important things to you um, and really delve into each experience. You want to make sure you know, it's really clear what you did, how you did it, any results that, that kind of came through. Um, on the flip side, if you have too much, um, you know, it doesn't need to be everything you've ever done. So think about, you know, you can kind of pick and choose what's relevant. Um, it also, at this point in your career life, no one's going to be worried if there's a hole in your experience. So don't feel like, oh, this summer I did something that wasn't relevant to that opportunity, but I have so much to talk about from all my other stuff. But if I don't include that thing, they're going to think I didn't do anything. Don't even worry about it. Um, just focus on the relevant stuff and don't worry about the time frame at all. Um, so that's one way you can cut a little bit of content from a too long resume. You can also do the reverse. So you're going to, you know, small font, small margins, consolidate things onto one line, your contact information. Um, you can really tighten up your spacing between lines. Um, you can prioritize things. Um, and, you know, I always recommend keeping a master resume. So you want entries for everything you've ever done. And then you can kind of pick and choose what you use for each resume. Um, or each application um, based on what you're applying to. So that way you have all the work done um, in advance and it's just sort of some cutting and pasting and, and getting things um, organized for each opportunity or each type of opportunity. Um, and then your entry descriptions, um, you know, you can kind of mess with those a little bit and balance the length with the number of experiences. You wanna make sure you're, you know, like we said before, really diving deep um, on ones that are relevant and the other ones can be less. Um, as we say here, it's a case by case. We can ask a PCA like Carrie, who's on and helpful, um, if you have specific questions on your resume. Um, so here's resources. Um, so cover letter for career advisors are doing open hours remotely. We are lucky to have them. So you can email everything to Career Lab at Brown and someone awesome like Carrie will help you. Um, job and internship search, career counselors are available. We have appointments in Handshake. Um, all of us. You also can use Brown Connect um, to locate internships, handshake for jobs, um, and then the um, 
resume, cover letter, LinkedIn examples, and tip sheets are all available um, on our website, and there's a link to those here as well. Um, and like I said, I can share these um, with, I'm going to post the, my slide deck on the website, and you can access it there. So any questions about resumes, searching right now, absolutely anything I can help with. Um, I actually have a small point to add if that's okay. okay. Oh, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, that was a great presentation. Uh, thank you. But just in terms of the bullet points, try to keep your description to one line because you don't want to have a whole paragraph um, for one bullet point when you're describing Very experience. Very good point. Yeah, it should be as concise as possible. You know, it doesn't need to be a full sentence. Um, you know, it should just be, you know, like Terry said, try to keep it to one line. Um, it just makes your resume look cleaner and you can usually cut and you know, really, really tighten up your language to get there. So thank you for sharing that excellent point. <laughs> Anybody else have a questions? No. Um, so we have another um, workshop this afternoon at four talking about the internship search right now. Um, if you can't make that or and want to, um, message me and I am happy to get you the slide deck for that. There are some really great links to um, some crowdsourced materials are, that are updates on um, status of internships. So not just Brown, but students from all over are kind of providing updates on if their internship has been postponed, canceled, um, shortened, remote only, that kind of thing. So there's some really great um, resources out there to, to keep everyone kind of up on what's going on with opportunities that they may have secured or maybe in the running for. Um, and then there's some other great sources for um, looking for remote work um, and other kind of tips on what to be doing right now if you're feeling um, like there's not a lot you can do. Um, you know, with all that said, it's kind of what you're up for emotionally. So if you're not really <laughs> feeling ready to jump into anything or you're feeling really um, overwhelmed or, or anything, you know, kind of giving yourself some time um, is, is totally what we'd recommend. You know, we're not here to, <laughs> to make you do things you're not ready for, um, but we are available when you are ready. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Um, I have a question, sorry. Oh, sure. I just thought of it. Um, can the career lab, like if we were to email the career lab and ask them to put us in contact with like a brown student who works at a certain company or um, like applied to a lot of jobs in a certain industry or something like that, like could they do that if you wanted, I don't know, to learn more about it or I don't know. I I'm sorry, but your speaker cut out in the beginning. I missed the beginning of what you said. Oh, sorry. Um, if we were to email the career lab, could they like put us in contact with a brown student who like worked at a certain company that we're interested in or applied to a bunch of jobs like specific job descriptions or a specific industry um and like could we talk to them about their experience with that or like whether they liked working at a certain place or things like that yeah so um you so you want an alum or you want like a currently enrolled student who had the internship um, last year currently enrolled student yeah, I mean, we don't necessarily have that information. I'm happy to, if you want to email me what you're looking for, I'll do my best to round up any information I can share. Um, mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we don't always hear from companies who goes there and, and we don't always have like the hard lists that we would love to have yeah. to be able to do this. But I will dig as much as I can to get you the information. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's just A-M-Y underscore T-A-R-B-O-X at Brown. Okay. Um, something else um, to that question is that some students profile are public on uh, Handshake and you can see their past experiences and if you oh, think okay, you like more from them, you can definitely email them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, you know, on, um, you know, Brown Connect, you can look for alums and the recent alums have been uploaded there as well. Okay. Uh, and, and also playing around on LinkedIn, the Brown University dashboard, you know, that includes currently enrolled students, faculty and staff. So you can, you can see kind of who's been at internships before. Okay. Um, so lots of different ways, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to look in my records too, and not my records, but the Career Labs records <laughs> and see, um, see what I can find if you still are, are seeking someone. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else? No? All right. Okay, everyone. Thanks. Have a good day.
Me too. Bye. Bye.